simply hitting it longer and straighter is the route to lower scores. And I can't wait to share with you what I did with James in his lesson. I'm gonna summarize it in just five minutes. But the result of his lesson, when he went to Portugal after his second round, he was that confident he moved back from yellows all the way to whites and knocked eight shots off his score. Wow, this is gonna be a great lesson for you today. And, and I know 100% every single golfer can benefit from this. So welcome to a brand new video. I'm Alex Elliott, PJ Golf Professional, and we're answering this question today from Jacob because we are powered by you. My goal is to help you play your best golf this season. So let's go through this lesson. There's just gonna be three simple nuggets of information because I keep seeing on YouTube all these really complicated golf tips, and honestly, that is not worth it. No way we can all interpret the information correctly. So three simple little nuggets of information. And as I say, all golfers can 100% benefit from this. Now, what I said to James was nice and simple, right? I want you to get into a position in the backswing where you feel all the work is done. So all you've got to do is just swing with some tempo on the way down. So it's almost like pulling that elastic band back and letting it go with no thought on that downswing. So the first thing we said was, right, if you want distance, you want power with whatever club, we have to get the club in the fingers on this glove hand. Now, the simplest way of thinking about that, look closely at this, bury the club in your little finger. So that is what I'd class in the palm. You can see a massive difference, a massive distance here between my little finger and the shaft, right? I want you to bury the club in your little finger. That gets the meaty part, this padded part, sitting on top. And that's as simple as it is. That is the first nugget of information. Nice and simple, bury the club in the little finger. By the way, how beautiful is this? Look at this morning. This is the 13th at Mottram Hall, a spring morning. This is officially the start of the golf season. Like, I was watching the Masters last night. I know this video is going out after that, but I was like, right, I can't wait to get out this morning. So. Tip number two is all around what you saw in the thumbnail. And I call this the T-peg trick. I should have really tested that, Alex, and getting that in easier. There we go. Through. So nice and simple. I want you to place a T-peg right in the end of your golf club. This is a genius little brilliant hack that just allows you to get great sense of what the club is doing. Because I often find, and this is what James said, I don't really know where my club is. Well, straight away, I've got a reference point now. So what I want you to avoid at all costs is this, especially with driver, but with all clubs. That feeling of that club working around us and the T-peg pointing out in that direction really early, okay? You have to avoid that because if you come and look closely when I get this action, one, I get no body motion. So actually my power source is reduced but also I'm sacrificing that club face. Well, look at that, I can't get you in that position. You've got to avoid that at all costs. So this is how we fix, and this is the nugget of information on point two. I said to him, well, just nice and simple, think of this T-peg as your reference point and keep that pointing at you for as long as possible. So we made a little few practice swings like this. Okay, well that's that, isn't it? Straight away, look how that without all the complexity of drop the shoulder, do this, do that, gets you turning the body. Now watch this, this is all we said. Here, here to the top. So nice and simple, up to hip height, keep the T-peg pointing at you. Really, really easy. Right, okay, I'm gonna hit this one at slow-mo. Just look at this. This is exactly what you've got to feel. T-peg pointing at you, you're in a position now where this is gonna lead us onto the backswing the turn in the backswing. You've already started half of this, but let's finish it off, the final crown on this puzzle. Now, this is the power source in my opinion, right? Far too many golfers, when we swing back, we get low. Now, if we get low, we're gonna jump up and throw away all that power. We want to have that feeling of getting out the ground to in the ground to out the ground, okay? That would be like our real sort of detailed version of what power is. So all I want you to think about is in the backswing, can we feel as we get our back to target, we get our back to target, and we feel as though our right hip gets a little bit taller. So we've got to feel as though we're in this position, because look at me here, this is be able to get a nice move where we get power here, not down here. 
that's really cramping up our body. We want to make ourselves feel as big and as turned as possible. Now I appreciate for some of us, that will be hard, right? I get that, but we try to do our best version. So with the golf club in your hand, just make it feel as big as turn as possible. Now notice, as I'm doing this, right, I've not got my shoulders level, okay? Avoid that, but that left shoulder to the ground, as big as possible. And that is the final little nugget of information. That's all you need. So bury the club in the fingers, okay? Nice and simple. Feel as though you start the swing correctly and cap that off with the turn. That is how you're gonna hit it longer. That's how James went from the yellows to the whites. And I want you to do the same thing. So guys, thanks so much for watching today's video. I do hope you enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy it, please do not forget to subscribe.